Hey, everybody. Welcome to this uh, special uh, FL Teams presentation, uh, something maybe we'll be bringing you every Friday. Uh, you probably know me if you watch FL Teams. I am Jeff Macalino, uh, and I'm joined by uh, Chad Patrick, uh, who's also known as Your Highness over at WeWinYouWin.com. Uh, sh shameless plug, Chad was on the Jeff Macalino podcast not too long ago. And by the way, I would highly recommend listening to that episode for a lot more in-depth conversation about uh, maybe uh, gambling methodology and, and stuff like that. Um, we're not going to dive too, too, too deep into that end. But Chad, uh, he's been publicly posting for free his Facebook post, uh, his college football picks on Facebook for two decades now. He's got a consistent winning percentage. It's between 62 and 64% which is outstanding, and it's over two decades of, of picks. He's got a track record here that you can trust more than anyone else. Um, three years ago, Chad took it a little more seriously, uh, really dove in, built his own algorithm system, and uh, things got even better. And you can now uh, see, you know, you can now join his community, his website at wewinyouwin.com. Um, so we thought we'd go over a, a handful of uh, college football games coming up this weekend, including the uh, the prominent Florida college football games. And uh, let's take a spin. Anything to add before we dive in, Chad? No, I'm good. Let's, let's, let's make some money, man. Let's do it. <laughs> there we go. All right. The first game, um, it is, uh, let's say, the most disappointing team in the state of Florida. Uh, Underwhelming. Clemson. Yeah, a, a, a bit. Uh, I don't think this is what my uh, Florida State football fans expected this season. Uh, so, Chad, what um, and I'll point out, by the way, uh, the scale is over here on the right next to the graphic that explains um, that plus six for Clemson. But, Chad, you you take it away. <laughs> Sure. Yeah. Let me explain the scale first, then we can get in the game. That way I only have to explain it one time. Mm -hmm. um, so, like Jeff said, you can see on the screen. I try to make this pretty self-explanatory, but in this complex, weird brain of mine, sometimes it doesn't always compute to the public. So um, over under, if you look on the graphic, you'll see third line down, it says grade Clemson plus six over under 51 and a half. The 51 and a half is pretty self-explanatory. That's just where I would make the over under line if I was the bookmaker odds maker. If you look towards the top where the logos are at, that's what the lines were on Tuesday when I post these. Sometimes these are on Wednesday, but these these Friday games were all posted on Tuesday. So that line might change, but that's what the line was on uh, on Tuesday when this graphic was posted in the community. Hold on one second. <coughs> Sorry. So if you're looking then down on the grading scale, you're going to look at the over-under. I have this as 51.5, and, and the over-under, the line was 47.5. I would lean over here um i'm not personally on on the over here but if you are going to bet aside lean over it's a little too close i like to almost be a, a touchdown discrepancy before i start betting um my concern here is florida state not putting enough points up to get over if that makes sense yeah. um as far as the grade part so this is where some people get confused so we understand that clemson's minus 14 and a half got it the grade plus six has nothing to do with any points. That has to do with on the right part of your screen here. I guess I'm pointing the wrong way. Anyways, <laughs> so the favorite per the scale plus six means ATS, which just simply means against the spread. In this line, 14 and a half is a terrible fucking number. So I don't like 14 and a half. So we're going to be on Clemson, but we're going to get on the right side of 14. That's one way to bet this game, right? So you're going to pay a little more juice, maybe about like one, minus 130. But two touchdowns, you're a winner. Or you can do what I do, and I say, fuck these bitches, man. And we reverse line this thing up to, like, minus 15 and a half. Look, if they're going to win by 15, they're going to win by 16. This way, I can get lay an even money bet and not lay the minus one Ted odds. There is a very small chance, but this is football, remember? Numbers can only be scored in twos, threes, sixes, ones, and then twos again. Does that make sense? So you yep. can figure out math. Unlike baseball or hockey, which obviously don't score as much, every number can be hit. In football, not every number can be hit. 
The team to win by 14, well, that's real easy. That's two touchdowns. Then you can start doing weird field goal combinations, things like that. The difference or the 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 ability – not the ability. What word am I trying to find? The probability of Clemson winning this game by 15 points but not 16 points is so fractionally small that – you would be if you're going to take 14 and a half, take 15 and a half because you'll get even money or they're close. You're not not laying juice, and that's the other thing you'll learn about me probably real quick if you tune in the segment. Stop laying juice where you don't have to. It's it's real easy in this racket. If you can make every bet 50 50 with you know even money, you only got to go 50 percent. At least you break even, whatever. So I'm a plus money player. Not that I don't play favorites. I do play favorites. I play dogs. I play where the lines are wrong. That's what I try to do. So. Line is wrong here. I would have this line at Clemson probably about minus 18 and a half, minus 19 and a half. If you look down, and it's a little small, it says get on the right side of 14, which is what I kind of told you. If you're playing conservative, buy down to 13 and a half. Get on. But if you really want to be more aggressive and probably where I will end up, and I don't know if I fired on this one, actually. Let me look. Sorry. Let me see if I actually even fired a bet on this, this game yet. Uh... See, I'm I'm yes. making okay. my notes, and I am. So here, so here, so here it is. This is what I did. I actually, and I don't do this a ton, but because I do like the over a little bit, but not crazy, and I do like Clemson by two touchdowns for sure. The official play on this, I didn't know I was giving out official plays, but we'll give it out official plays. What the hell? Is it's a, a same game two leg, and that's just a sweet in the pot. So we got uh, we took Clemson at minus eleven and a half. Reason being. Being up nine, being up 10, and getting to be up 12 to get up 13 is sometimes easier to do than getting up two touchdowns with field goals and weird things in there. So Clemson minus 11 and a half. And then we're going 44 over 44 and a half. So we're going to bring that the line down a little bit. Again, my thing is I think the line should be 51 and a half. Let's say I'm a touchdown wrong. That's where we end up on 44 and a half. Mm. Follow me? Okay. Yeah. That ends up being a plus 140 play. We are risking a, a 2.1 units on it, which um, just sort of, that's the thing everybody gets confused in this racket about is uh, units. So for me, your weekly bankroll, let's just say it's $1,000 for easy math. 1% of that would be how much, Jeff? 10 bucks. 10 bucks, yep. Yeah. <laughs> $10. And uh, so in this scenario, if I had $1,000 in my bankroll this week, my bet on this bet would be $21. So mm. 2.1 units. I bet if I had $1,000 to play with this week, $21. No. Yeah, $21 I'd bet on this at plus 140. That's how it works. Excellent. Excellent. I'll cool. You 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 didn't have to do much to win me over the way FSU's played, but I think I'm going to put some money on Clemson on this one as well. <laughs> because this is a Florida team, we'll get into a little bit more. DJ, don't ask me to say his last name, Angulangle. Um, yeah. <laughs> I've been low on him since he was at Clemson. He's only gotten worse as he's gotten in his in his career. Anyways, yeah, I think that's that's the there's other gaps and holes in Florida. Uh, for instance. Their rush defense, I mean, rush offense is atrocious. Let me just, and this is the one thing that just stands out at me. So the way I do advanced analytics on, and I actually have the screen right here. Can you still see me? Yeah. All right, I switched tabs, so I can't see you. So let me just flip over here real quick and pull up Florida State. This is just the one uh, data point that just really jumps off at me so i just wanted to get you the actual numbers of what this looks like so their rush offense is fucking atrocious so the way i break rushing down is into five categories okay we have power runs success so basically in between the tackles more of like a goal line um i formation type run okay right then we have a, a stuff rate so how many times does the guy get stuffed or the rate does he get stuffed at the line right where he can't get past his own lineman line yards per rush what is the average uh, pure rushing gain per rushing attempt okay second level rushing yards this means once we get past the line men and up into the linebackers and the safeties and, and quarterbacks how many yards are we going to get per rush and then open field so when a guy's in open field and not having to break tackles and things like that how far is he advancing the ball before being brought down all right so those are the five 
uh, rushing categories that I use to then get a one rushing score, if that makes sense. I'm maybe getting too in-depth here. So <coughs> their power success is pretty uh, middle of the road, okay? Um, that we're Florida State's offense we're talking about here. Their stuff rate, and this number means nothing to you, is 22. Now, that's on a scale of 100. Your average college football team should be about 45 to 55 in that range. They're 22, okay? Mm -hmm. Line yards per rush, 2.5. I don't have to tell any brainiacs sitting at home that knows football that two and a half rushing yards per attempt is terrible. Yeah. Second level, 0.8, and then open field point. I mean, we're not even getting full yards on average once you're up into the linebackers. Now, name me the first decent rushing team that comes to your mind. College football team. Just pick a team at random. USF. <laughs> that wasn't very random, but let's pull them up. <laughs> South Florida, okay? South Florida, I'm just going to pull up the rushing numbers just to give you a perspective uh, to Florida State. And I can't remember the Florida State numbers already, but the power success uh, here for USF is going to be 70, which I think is a little bit less than Florida State, if I remember correctly. Their stuff rate, okay? Remember what was Florida State, like 22 or 22. something like that? Yep. Yeah. They're 44, almost wow. du double. I mean, that means they're getting stuffed almost, or Florida State's getting stuffed almost twice as often as South Florida's rush team. Line yards per rush, what was they, 2.5 Florida State? 3.2 mm -hmm. South Florida. Second level rush yards was 0.8, I think, for Florida State, 1.2 for South Florida. In open field, this should be a big number, right? Open field, think about that. Yeah, Florida State had like what less than a yard, or less something? than a yard, which is yeah. shocking. South Florida, one point eight, almost two yards. That is what, uh, and and by no means, you know this. South Florida ain't no powerhouse school, right? That, that's no, just, there's no. So that'll give you perspective on how terrible, terrible the Seminoles' rush game is. By the way, the um. The one thing they have going working, which is why I think the over might work, the one weak spot for Clemson is the rush defense. It, they're not, they're not they're something not, going. <laughs> it's not atrocious. It's not atrocious, but they, they are known to give up some plays. So, um, all right, I think we've had I, – I, we're 10 minutes on one game. Sorry, I will I will spend way too much time on each of these games. I'll try to I, – I, I get excited. This, <laughs> look, if no money was involved and you just put me in a random place and said you can watch anything in the world on this one TV – put on a college football game of any two teams, and that would be my first thing to watch. I would choose over any movie show, anything. does not matter. I love this game. All right, next yeah. game. No, no, no. And and we won't go as in-depth on all of them, but it's good to show how how much you go in-depth just so people know, you know, <laughs> what you're I talking about. I spend 30 to 40 minutes per game, and I put out, 50 of these graphics i can't never point the right right way i put out 50 of these graphics and then the other smaller like real small schools i don't necessarily always mess with the graphics but i'll still put out a um like a written kind of thing i mean the graphic alone takes five or ten minutes of my time just to slap that together so anyways all right hawaii yeah, it this looks is, good too this is terrible timing this is the last game this is the save me game i was hoping you save this one for the end but that's fine this is going to be the last i think the last game of the evening let me just Flip my page. Yeah, this is probably, I think this is the latest game on the schedule. Yeah. I think I noticed that earlier. Random trivia fact, and I'll give you the answer so you don't have to dwell on it. The number one bet university for the last 10 years is Hawaii. Uh, not not them, not necessarily them, their games. Reason right, being because they're a, the latest it's a, games. It's a, exactly, you got it. Okay. Um, all right, let's pull up this one. We have... All right, everybody kind of understands the grade. So San Diego State, we have as a plus three. San Diego State is the favorite. So if you look on our scale, that's a no bet. Meaning that that line's about right where I think. I mean, I think I think San look, San Diego State wins this game. Should win this game. They're at home. They have the better team. That means they're probably gonna win by a field goal. I think I put a small bet on this. I did, but I actually did not. I'll show you where we're going with this game, actually. I know where we're going with this one. All right. Over-under. <laughs> 49 and a half points, and I'm pretty sure this line has already moved. Hold on. 
Uh, I've got it at 48 and a half, so not yeah. too much. See, it's already coming down. Like I said, this is from Tuesday. We, I don't get into closing line data. And most people don't know what that means or cares, but about 60% of our bets, we beat the closing line. All right. Um, game's going fucking way under. Way, I mean, way under. Let's, let's just get on this. Forget the sides. San Diego State should win this game. Um, Hawaii have, have I terrible, terrible. There's two categories that they even deserve to be on the field with this team. And that is going to be their, um, and I'll pull up their exact data right here. Kind of like have my laptop here for you is going to be their, uh, points per possession. And I'll can give you the breakdown of what that actually means. And then the offensive rushing is the same as San Diego state. So it's not so much that they're better. Uh, their rush defense is slightly better. Um, <clears throat> All right, so scoring opportunities. Um, this basically just analyzes the drive in which the offense advances the ball out past their opponent's 40-yard line. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Hawaii's had 21 offensive opportunities this season. Their average points per opportunity is 4.2. That doesn't sound like a lot of points. That's really good. San Diego State, just to give you comparison, uh, co- Comparison, 15 opportunities, so a little less on the opportunities, 2.5. Wow. So they're averaging less than a field goal per those possessions. Yeah, but th- and think about that, right? And so and it ends up being like one and a half points. So Hawaii, and again, this is just on the scoring opportunities, is, and this is how I figure out lines, just so you understand. In this category, Hawaii would actually have a one and a half point favorite advantage in this category. Now they get slaughtered in other categories, which is why San Diego win the game. But in this specific category, that would give Hawaii a one point five point advantage. Rushing again, it's just on the defense. The issue with San Diego State's rush defense is going to be their stuff rate. They don't stuff a lot of people at the line, and then that also then translate into line yards per rush. But they make up on it. They're really good in the second level in open field. So that's where they kind of balance out on the rushing. All right. Um, but this game's under, 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 under. The official bet is – I had it right here. Hold on. We're under 49.5 points, which we got at minus 105 on DraftKings, and I think this line's already done. This is a 4.2 unit play. So remember I talked about wow. units before. So if you had $1,000 to play with this weekend – $42 of that money should be on the under in this game, which is going to be one of the larger bets we make. Okay. Yeah. That's a big bankroll thing. Uh, we didn't get, we're not going to get into that here, but bankroll management is huge. Okay. Yeah. Um, if you want to go into, if you want to hear more about bankroll management, go to the Jeff McAlino podcast. Chad explains it very well. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, and then also, everybody that's in our, like, uh, so we have a whole community which involves picks and plays and contests and all that stuff. I also have a whole playbook like a three or four page playbook on exactly how I do it. And like I said, I've been doing this as my sole source of income now for two years. So anyways, I think we're good with this game. Go under, go under heavy. There we go. All right. Kansas, uh, Arizona state, Arizona state. And we do have an official play on this one as well. Let's pull up that for us. Okay. So Arizona state plus four, that is, uh, they are the favorite. That does say money line. Uh, I'm just going to tell you right now, we're not on the money line. That's not the play. But the money line is, is they, Arizona State is going to win this game majority, and more than the majority, a vast majority of the time. Obviously, there's opportunities for Kansas to win this game. But if you run this game 10 times, Arizona State's winning more than eight times, but not nine, if that makes any sense. Okay. Here are the key things, and I don't know how well they can read my notes on there, but FEI and NDE, what does that mean? Well, somebody a lot smarter than I came up with it. It's advanced uh, data metric, and it's the guy's names in there, and I can't remember, so don't beat me up. But basically, in layman's terms, what this is, is the um, it, it gets rid of all the garbage time possessions, and then it would factor in if both teams were on a neutral field against the um, average opponent in college football, like the mean. 
Is that way too complex? Anyways. No, no, a, no, no, not at all. Good, Makes it's, sense. A, it's a good way, especially come bowl games where they're on neutral fields to say, how do these two teams maybe stack up against each other? So that's FEI. Arizona State is way ahead of Kansas in the FEI. NDE is basically neutral field defense efficiency is what it stands for. So the same kind of concept, how good does the defense stand up on a neutral field in a bubble, right? Sure. Greatly better Arizona State than Kansas. Now factor in the fact they're at home, right? That's if they were in a neutral field somewhere. Now they're at home. That's going to be an advantage. It is a night game, so the sun will be down here. I live 10 minutes. I might go to the game. I'm 10 minutes down from the stadium. The place will be rocking. Um, rush defense. Okay, we've been pulling this up again. Arizona's rush defense is where this game is won because Kansas's rush offense is pretty good. Arizona State's rush defense is where this game is made. Or they're going to either win or lose, right? So let's pull up the numbers real quick on rushing. Again, we're familiar with a little bit of these numbers, but the power success rate on Arizona State's defense is 78%. Again, that's pretty middle of the road. The stuff rate. Now, remember, offensively, the bigger the number, the better, right? Because yeah. you want success, right? Inverse, defensively, you want a smaller number. 17. Remember how bad Florida State was and they were like 22 off on 22. their offensive side? Yeah. Arizona State's defense is 17. That's pretty good. Lines, yards per rush. Defensively, they give up two and a half. That's as bad as Florida State's rush off. See what I'm saying? Second yeah. level, 0.6. Open field, 0.4. Wow. This defense, uh, rush defense, is one of the no, – not, not, again, part of this is opponent-based, so let's not get over excited here. But f in the big – what are they, the Big 12 now or whatever the, the Big 12 are? now, yeah. 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 <laughs> Going for their first conference win at home, too. I mean, They have one of the best rush defenses, one of the best rush defenses in that conference. Okay, There are much better Big 10 and SEC – rush defenses in the country. Let's not get it twisted. For the Big 12, Arizona State, one of the best. The Kansas offensive rush, right, because that's that's what we're really going against, is this is the, one of their strong points, right? So stuff rate's going to come in at 69, so that's a pretty good. Uh, power rate was 80, so that's like right again right there in the middle. Line yards per rush, 3.8. Second level, 1.4. Open field, 1.4. So good. Some of those were numbers, though, are a little bit even less than um, your your Bulls, your South Florida Bulls. But again, that's opponent based. A lot of this is opponent based. You have to understand this is all data from this year. So the way I see this game, Arizona State wins a close a close game. Last team to score probably wins. Um, going over the bet on this was. Two and a half. No, I'm sorry. Two point two. So we're basically laying the juice. Arizona State minus two and a half. Um, nothing super crazy, but ultimately, I think on a neutral field they'd win by a field goal. So at home they better win by a field goal. There we go. Moving on. All right. Now we got a couple more Florida games to finish us out here. We got uh, Miami, uh, who uh, they they they're still controversially undefeated, um, we could so, say. <laughs> two things. Number one, very. I, I my legion is very pure. I'm a diehard Michigan fan through and through. There is no ifs, ands, and buts about it. Okay. I thoroughly, since I was a child, have always enjoyed watching Hurricanes play football, especially if they're beating Ohio State. Okay. <laughs> um we got an interesting play with this one, but let's get into Miami real quick. Who bet on Cam Ward to be the Heisman Trophy winner in week one? This guy. Okay, great. If you can get him 12-1, to 1, good. You know who our second bet is? We just put him in last week. Don't ask me the guy's name. Boise State kid. 11-1. to yeah. 1. <laughs> Don't worry. I will have the Heisman Trophy at, at the end of the year. I, I have the last three years. Miami, also a ticket to win the ACC, also a ticket to win the national championship. That ticket's garbage. The national, the, their defense is fought. I didn't realize how bad it was. Ugh. They're a playoff team, though. Okay. Miami. FE, uh, FEI, what we talked about, neutral field. They, Cal doesn't yeah. belong on the field with them. They're so much better on that. Points per possession. 
starting field position, rushing. This is where, and what I say, Miami should win by two touchdowns, easy. Now, I throw this into a little parlay with an Auburn thing that, whatever, we're on Auburn with a ton of points. But I am totally cool with you actually reverse lining this up, and I know this says buy down. Screw it. And I'm going to tell you the one number right here why this game, and you know enough football, Jeff, to know this. Two things in football travel, and I don't care if we're going from South Florida to Northern California. Defense and running the ball. Yep. And running the ball, Miami. We get, get in there. I, rushing is so important. I know in a passing football league, rushing is really important. Miami's really, really good rush offense. Really, really good rush offense. Really, like one of the better, best rush offenses in their conference. Like maybe one of the better, right? Guess where Cal struggles? Run defense. Oh, my man, you're catching on. <laughs> you're catching on. Yep, yep, you're, you're catching on. Just to give you a few numbers, just because we, I guess I wasn't planning on doing this, but this I think gives people perspective on kind of where they rank. Cal's rush defense. Remember that power success? Everybody was in that, that uh, you know, 70 to 80 range was kind of where everybody's right. And, again, remember, defense, we want lower numbers. Offense, we want higher numbers. There are 100. Power. I mean, that means people are running it, powering it down their throat. Stuff rate. This isn't as terrible. 34. That's not that's not as terrible as I thought it would be. All right. Line yards per rush. <coughs> Excuse me. 3.8. They're almost giving up four yards. Second level, full yard. Open field, full yard. Okay. That's their weakness. Um. Yeah, my, Miami should. I, oh, I, here's the <laughs> other thing. One other thing. This is and this is for Miami more important. Explosiveness is another category. Explosive plays, rushing, explosive plays, passing, all that, right? Cal, and th these numbers don't mean anything to you, but it's basically the explosiveness measured on average by the points on successful plays, blah, 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 blah. Rushing plays – are done at 15 yards or more and passing plays at 20 yards or more. Cal, who, by the way, Cam Ward just keeps throwing 300 yards on people, is one of the worst pass defenses when it comes to explosive plays. Oof. Yep. Yeah, My, that's going to hurt. <laughs> Miami, okay, and I part, I, without even looking, I already know this is going to be really good. Explosiveness, rush plays, they're middle of the road offensively. Pass plays is a two. That might be one of the highest pass explosive. Um, basically, let me try to put this into some type of layman's terms. A, a two on a, an explosive plat basically means they're almost averaging two explosive pass plays per drive. Wow. Like not that it's insane. one it's, it's one one point eight two. So it's not fully two. But but yeah, still. But now now mind you, that's a 20-yard pass. So we're we're saying that. Almost on average, each drive they're getting two 20 yard passes. That's what I said. Okay. Miami's offense might be one of the best offenses in the country. It's the yeah. defense that's the problem. Look, scoring opportunities. Remember, we talked about scoring opportunities. This is about getting over the 40. 42 opportunities. That's a shit ton for Miami. Yeah. Five. Five points per opportunity. Wow. Remember those other teams that were like 1.1. Two, yeah. Miami's offense is legit as shit. It's the defense that's going to be the issue. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Miami, well, and, and Cal's coming off of putting up a whopping nine points against FSU last week. Um, two, I guess it was two weeks ago. I guess Cal's well rested, but so is Miami. They they played Thursday last week. The over underline doesn't make sense to me, so I'm not touching it. I and sometimes the what the numbers I do and all this data because this is no emotion right and then i look at it as a, a diehard fan going i don't i don't know i don't know i don't like i don't agree with my own stuff sometimes if that makes sense this yeah. over underline is one of those places where blindly looking at this this should be a bet on the under i think miami runs this score up yeah now I, whether I they can keep my cow off the board enough that's fine <laughs> well because last week people were doubting them they know what's up. People are like, are they really a top 10 team? If they have the opportunity to put it on Cal late night, prime time, they're going to be the only prime time game, I believe, on it at that window, or maybe one of two. 
all eyes on your Heisman Trophy winner this year. I really think, I mean, the dude's going to maybe set records. If not, the other guy's going to set records. They're going to have to give the Heisman to somebody that breaks a record. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, Miami by two touchdowns. I feel pretty good about that. I also said that last week, so just keep that in mind. That was before I realized how shitty their defense was. All well, right, get- we, we found out. <laughs> Moving um, on to the next game. Moving on to the next game. The, the last this, game we got, last we got game? That, okay, that crappy perfect. school in Orlando is uh, going uh, up to uh, Gainesville to play the Gators. So um, that that uh, the, the shittiest school in the state, um, just as far as academics. Uh, travels to Gainesville. Um, oh, I'm I'm making fun of the Orlando school, not the Gators. Gators. Oh, Florida is a good school. Florida is a good school. <laughs> yeah, the the directional school, the, the the Mickey Mouse University. They're the University of Walt Disney. Huh? Yeah. Um, yeah. The... So okay, let's get in. So you don't like Central Florida? The the what the Knights, the Golden Knights, the, what what Knights? Golden Knights. The golden showers. Uh, golden golden, sh- golden. By the golden way, fryers. I think that's usually their their job is frying up fries when they're done. Um, as somebody who attended a public university in the state of Florida, um, I did attend a, quite a few Gator games. Uh, it wasn't too far, but. UCF was not, uh, and I, you know, had friends that would transfer over there and things like that. But yeah, UCF just never. One of the few schools in Florida we, we never went down and partied at or anything like that. And it's supposed to be a good party school, but anyways, all right, that can all be cut out. <laughs> no, no, no. It's I, I party there a couple times, but you don't want to go to a game there. They're they're savages. Yeah, are they? Yeah. Um. All right. So great. I have UCF the savages. Plus three, which we look at this. They are the favorite in this game. This says no bet. They win this game, though. Florida's terrible this year. They are terrible. They are a shell of themselves. The overall underline, I got pretty spot on. I wouldn't touch that at all. Let's dive a little bit deeper. And I, I wouldn't normally do this because it's a game that I'm not even going to bother with. But Right. It seems I, too close to really bet on anything here. Yeah, right? I, I have no action on this game at all. But I know that a lot of your people, especially, are going to have an interest because they might be, uh, you know, affiliated or have some type of uh, fandom to either one of these schools. Um, we'll we'll go line by line here. We've already made this show long as shit, so why not a little bit more? UCF <laughs> FEI is going to slightly um, nudge out Florida, but we're in the swamp, so let's just call that a wash. Defensively, the NDE they are definitely a clear favorite, but again. That swamp is a tough place to go, so let's call that a wash. We're going to get into the, uh, the points, points per uh, possession and scoring opportunities. Um, Florida's pretty good, but their defense is pretty good at giving it up too. So while their uh, offensive opportunities are going to be higher, their defensive opportunities of letting up is going to be higher as well, where uh, UCF is a little better uh, – sorry, I don't know. UPS delivery or whatever. Um, the, uh, the discrepancy between the offense and defensive uh, part is going to be greater for UCF than Florida, if that makes any sense. That lose you there? No, no, no. No, I got you. Okay. Um, on the uh, – that's pretty much a wash. Okay, rushing, right? Because nobody – that's one thing I learned. Today's game – not enough people pay. They want passing, passing, passing. Rushing controls the game. That's kind of how you get the feel of the game. Yeah. Um, Florida's rush defense, very just kind of eh, middle of the road. Their rush offense is decent, not great. UCF's rush defense, very good. Very, very good. And their rush offense is pretty equal to Florida's. Let me pull up UCF's rush defense real quick here for you. All right, rush defense. And again, you kind of know where most of these numbers fall. Uh, power is a 70, so that's pretty good, right? That's kind of where most of them at. Maybe it's touched on the lower side. Stuff rates of 24, right? That's about it. Is their defense is as good as, bad, as, good as Florida's offense is bad, if that makes sense. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, lines per rush, 2.3. That's very good. And then second levels, 0.8, and open fields, 0.4. So those wow. are all very, 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 very good numbers. As bad as we were talking about Florida State's rush offenses, about as, how good as UCF's rush defense is. High-scoring game. So you're thinking rushing, probably not. No, 
in a high scoring game, it's the few possessions you can take or control and control the. Um, I'll give an example. The team that's on three, uh, third and five from the, their own 35 that can run that ball and get that first down might not seem like a big deal to you, but that could A, flip the field and also uh, change time of possession, get their defense. I mean, like in a high scoring game like this, defense is getting fatigued is always a concern as well. Right. Obviously, Florida, Gainesville is still going to be pretty humid and warm, right? Guy, guys, now they both Florida teams, they should be used to it, but. We are we are human, um, and don't trust the Gatorade in the swamp um, <laughs> as a visiting team. But yeah, I would say I'm not touching this game. If you have to pick a side, um, take UCF. But I would I would I'd be Flo Florida at home's tough. Florida at home's tough, especially on a, a team that's pretty close to them. Yeah, and that that was that was going to be a, a question I had just as a as a final topic uh, is uh, with some of these games, and this one's included for for that uh, Orlando school to to go and win a game in Gainesville would be a pretty big deal for their program. For them, um, yeah. Meanwhile, Florida, th their fans are not happy if things start out poorly. I have a feeling the crowd could get hostile towards the home team. Um, yeah, I think they want that coach gone. I, I, exactly. They they want to fire their coach. So so you know, other uh you know the Nats get up by by two touchdowns early. I think the Boo Birds come out next time the Gators punt the ball. Now uh, there is a scenario right where this game um could get ugly. Now I don't see it going that way, but let's say. POC gets the ball first. They go down and score a touchdown. There's going to be a lot of offense in this game, so let's not get it twisted. Florida comes out, maybe turns the ball over. UCF goes down and scores again, even if it's like a field goal. The crowd's gone. Remember we were talking about how like the advantage on some of this neutral field shit was going to be canceled out because of the swamp? Right. If UCF takes the win out of the fans' sales early, there is a possibility where they – stretch this out and win by like two touchdowns or something. I'm not saying it's going to happen. I think we have a close game. I think we have a, uh, you know, a high twenties to mid low thirties type with one score type game. I think UCF is the winner end of the day though. If I had, to, I'm not betting it, but if I had to, that's the side I would pick. The, 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 the loser is me. If I have to actually sit and watch this game at a friend's house, because I can't root for either of these schools. Uh, yeah. The one Chad. here's the one thing I don't know why I thought I threw this game in here. Here's one thing that the public is way wrong on, and I just want to. This is a little bonus bet for y'all. If you're catching this in time, and the line's already moving. Take the over in the Navy Air Force game. You're welcome. There you go. Uh, and a, an additional pick on the house. And uh, Chad, uh, over at We Win, you win real quick before we sign off. Tell the uh, audience uh, a little bit about uh, what you got going on over there. So, yeah, you can find any of our social media platforms, anything like that, from the website. So just go to wewinyouwin.com. That's the easiest place. Um, here's my 10-second sales pitch. I don't really care. At the end of the day, if you want to make money, you do. We've been doing this long enough. The track record has been good enough. But it is the only place that I'm aware of where not only can you get uh, the picks and plays, grades, breakdowns, everything we've gone over for myself and you know, I think we're up to like four other experts. But we run giveaways, contests. Uh, right now, we have uh, October's contest where each paid member got to draft one NFL and one college football player, and their monthly statistics is going to break out. They're going to get free months and free bets and giveaways and things like that. We do meetup events. It's it's basically, and this is what people have told me, is they bet on sports, but ultimately it can be kind of lonesome, especially if you're sitting at home watching the game. Now you have uh, an interactive group where not only can you ask professional people mid-game their opinions, their thoughts, hey, this, that, that, but there's a camaraderie. I, it wasn't my intent when this started, but there's a camaraderie there, and, and people become friends. And we have, like I said, we have these meetup events. We do have a meetup event coming up uh, October 26th. It'll be our third one. But, yeah, it's it truly is a community, and um, – we field ideas. We bounce ideas. It's a little bit of a think tank as well, but um, not for everyone. But those that are, are looking to either make a profit long term or 
just want some extra help or advice, we're here for you. And you don't have to have a ton of money. That's a great part is we have guys in there betting $5 a game. We got guys in there betting $500 a game and everywhere in between. So it doesn't matter if you're on the right side, you're on the right side. It doesn't matter the amount of money you put on the game, right? Right. If yeah. you bet 5,000, Jeff, and I bet five bucks, if UCF wins the game, we're both getting paid. Yeah. Right. So that's why scale bankroll, right. It's all on a percentage base. So if you got $10,000 and I got a thousand bucks, our percentage of what we're risking is the same. Obviously you'd be risking more, but on a percentage basis, we're, we're, we're risking the same. Right. Right. And, and obviously of course, be smart and know what your bankroll can be so that you don't end up homeless. Uh, <laughs> weekly. That's why I tell most people weekly. Most people can budget a weekly bankroll. You start doing yearly and monthly and, and say this week, I'm willing to risk this amount of money and lose this amount of money. And I always just say a thousand bucks because it's very easy to do math based upon what your numbers off a thousand. But a thousand dollar bankroll for this week means one unit should be a ten dollar bet. Now, do we bet one? On, I rarely bet one unit. We do a couple things, but two, three, four, occasionally five units is a big play. So, yeah, if you're $1,000, a $50 bet should be a big bet for you. Awesome. Well, Chad, thank you so much. Uh, folks, we will uh, we'll be bringing you this uh, again uh, probably every Friday for, for, for as long as we can. Make sure you like, you subscribe. Go over to We Win, You Win. Uh, go, uh, you know, follow on all the socials. Me too, by the way. I've oh, got socials. <laughs> and, and totally off topic, but totally relevant, is Jeff and myself have our own independent YouTube channels where we do food reviews. Now, this is just because I got so much time on my hands, I need something else to do. So I go around all of Phoenix area finding the best tacos. So if you want to go over to We Win You and Taco Reviews on YouTube, I appreciate a sub there. Jeff does Cuban sandwiches down in South Florida. And what's, the, what's your uh, YouTube channel again? Oh, well, it's just Jeff Macalino. <laughs> Bang. Good. If you like food, a little entertainment, a little pizzazz, a little pizzazz, go check out those. Those are fun. And if you want to make some money, head over to wewinuwin.com. Couldn't have said it better myself. Signing off here for FL Teams. I'm Jeff Macalino. He's Chad Patrick. We'll see you next week. How about the Tigers, baby? Peace.